Well, tonight we are learning more about a Washington State patrol operation that led to the arrest of seven men suspected of child exploitation. It is called Operation Net Nanny, which began back in 2016. The men were arrested over the course of several days. WSP and Grant County Sheriff's deputies used the Internet as a tool to identify the suspects. They say no actual children were ever put in harm's way. The men were investigated for communicating with the minor for immoral purposes, sexual exploitation of a minor or rape of a child in the second degree. No charges have yet been filed. Three teenagers and one adult were shot in a West Central Park at around 3 o'clock this morning. According to Spokane Police, there was a reported shooting at Dutch Jake Park on West College Avenue. When officers arrived, they found one person had been shot. Three others with gunshot wounds took themselves to the hospital. SPD says none of their injuries are life threatening. Police say they had been part of a large group hanging out in the park early this morning. They are currently looking to talk with anyone with more information about this shooting. Well, just two days after the Cheney Motel caught fire, the building has been torn down. Krem 2 went to Cheney today to confirm the building is no longer standing. City officials said this was one of the worst fires Cheney has ever seen. The intense fire destroyed the motel early Tuesday morning. The cause of the fire was still under investigation. The only piece of good news here, no one was hurt. Now to a story we've been tracking over the past three years. This morning, the Spokane police officer, former Spokane police officer, accused of rape while on duty, took the stand in his own defense today. Nathan Nash maintains his innocence. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley was in the courtroom today. She's joining us now with highlights from his testimony. Amanda? Over the last six days of testimony, we've heard from Nathan Nash's two alleged victims. Both women claim he raped them while on duty when he followed up on their original 911 calls. Now today, Nash took the stand and insists he is innocent. Now during Nash's testimony, the defense tried to establish that it was common for Nash to give out his personal cell number for work. Now this is key since court documents say Nash allegedly gave his personal number to the two victims. Court documents also say one of the victims described seeing a tattoo on Nash's back. But Nash implied in his testimony the only way she could have known about the tattoo is by viewing his Facebook profile picture that is viewable by the public. You never had consensual sex with her in August of 2019, right? No, I did not. So she would not have seen you without your clothes on. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, yes. And how many tattoos do you have? I have two. And they are? Uh, I have a tattoo on the upper right side of my shoulder, and then I have a tattoo that goes across my back. Uh, as depicted in those photographs? Yes. Now, when the state questioned Nash, he appeared willing to challenge any implications they made against his innocence. At times, his tone appeared to be irritated and condescending. Now, he discussed the Spokane Police Department's body camera policy, and Nash explained officers can turn it off at the request of a victim, which is what he says happened when he followed up with the alleged victims. Now, the defense rested its case today, but the court will be in recess until Monday morning. That's when attorneys will give their closing arguments and the jury will begin deliberations. Amanda Rowley, Crem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. For the first time in nearly 50 years, nearly all abortions in Idaho are now illegal. The Idaho near total ban on abortion went into effect today, but just hours before the abortion trigger law was set to begin, a federal judge put part of that law on hold. Certain sections of the law caught the attention of the Biden administration, so the Justice Department sued the state of Idaho and asked for an injunction. So here is a breakdown of yesterday's ruling. Right now, Idaho law says that every person who performs or attempts to perform an abortion is committing a crime, except for a doctor who determined in good faith an abortion was necessary to prevent the death of a pregnant woman. The U.S. Department of Justice claims the death of the pregnant woman is just too narrow and violates the Federal Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. In Wednesday's ruling, U.S. District Judge agreed and put a pause on just that part of Idaho's trigger law until the lawsuit runs its course through the courts. Well, now an Idaho doctor can perform an abortion if the woman's health is at risk. All other instances outside of rape or incest will still be illegal in Idaho. And after that ruling, the U.S. Department of Justice released a statement. Attorney General Merrick Garland reiterated that Idaho's law violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act and stand. It says the Department of Justice will continue to use every tool at its disposal to defend the reproductive rights protected by federal law. 
Well, in just two hours, Kootenai County Sheriff Bob Norris is hosting a town hall meeting on the agenda, talking about the department's active shooter protocols, Second Amendment rights, and the arrest of a hate group at that June Pride event in Coeur d'Alene. The conversation begins at 6 tonight. We'll have more coverage throughout the evening on Creme 2 News at 5, 6, 10, and 11 o'clock. All right, let's talk for, for weather now. Be prepared for another round of thunderstorms tonight. Let's get straight to meteorologist Michelle Boss for more on when we can expect those storms. Michelle? Yeah, Spokane may miss out again like they did last night. I think we saw certainly saw some lightning, got a trace of precipitation at the airport. Uh, did get uh, one good thunderstorm that rolled through the Spokane Valley, and so some isolated areas did pick up a quarter of an inch of rain, but most of the region saw nothing. Let's take a look at satellite and radar right now. We're still seeing circulation around an area of low pressure that is just starting to move through the inland northwest. It was in our region yesterday and is now starting to push through the Idaho Panhandle, but still seeing that circulation around it, bringing those thunderstorms over the higher terrain in north central and northeastern Washington. North Idaho getting a little bit more in the action there. You can see a lot of lightning with these storms, but also a lot of rainfall as well. So that's good news as far as fire weather is concerned. Places like Republic, Colville, I own Newport, uh, potentially getting in on a lot of stormy weather early this evening. And then as we move into North Idaho, uh, Sandpoint also likely to see some showers and thunderstorms. And the Silver Valley actually saw some slow moving thunderstorms earlier today that dropped quite a bit of rain. Again, Spokane might uh, get glanced by these thunderstorms, but after 8 o'clock, they're going to die down pretty quickly. So still a hot day out there. 87 right now in Spokane. It was in the 90s again across central Washington, 93 in Lewiston. Other than the isolated thunderstorm moving through this evening, should be quiet overnight and looking at another hot day tomorrow. But look at this, a big cool down for the weekend, partly cloudy and breezy on Saturday. Can you believe this 77 for the high and upper 70s for Sunday oh, and bring it on looking forward to upper 70s. Michelle, thank you very much. All right, still ahead tonight. Some tough news for former Zag Chet Holmgren. An injury will force him to sit out his NBA season. Prem 2's Andrew Quinn talks us through the severity of his foot injury, keeping him off the court. Plus Tom's barbecue on the road tonight. The restaurant known for its grilling skills when we come back.